Hi, this is episode two, week two, day 14 of the 49 day Great Root Race. And in this episode, we'll be doing our first of three feedings. And since the theme of this episode is booster or buster, we're gonna get a little psychological about it. And we'll be going over whether this is really about you or your plants. So keep watching, maybe you'll learn something. I hope I do. And this is a seven week, five video series where we grow basil from seed. That way we can test and compare the products I sell in my hydro store. And so we can finally, once and for all, figure out not only what works best, but how best to use the products. And while later in the video, we'll be mixing nutrients, watering, feeding, and comparing plant growth. For now, let's start with an introduction. Hi, I'm the Grow Boss, and this is my hydro store, where I get to meet lots of growers and listen to their stories, which is exactly how I wrote my book, The Grow Book and Equipment Guide, because for years now, I've been collecting and writing down all the questions my customers ask. And if at any time during this video, you want to find your closest hydro store or where you can buy my book or any of the other products you see in this video. Just click the opportunity button when it pops up or go to everyhydrostore.com. And now that you know that, let's catch you back up on what's already happened before we go on. In episode one, day one, the theme was promises and temptations. And I introduced you to all the equipment we'll be using and the rules of the Great Root Race. We mixed some pH adjusted 6.0 Ultimate RO water. We planted 600 basil seeds and then we watered everything except tray one, the control tray with Clonex solution. And for this episode, I thought we would start with the lesson root booster or root buster because it's kind of a long one. And then we'll start mixing and watering with all this good stuff. This episode is called Booster or Buster, and perhaps the best place to start is with one of those things you always hear me say, and that's this. Yields based on light and quality on grower talent, because I can assure you of two things. One, everything in my store works for growing cannabis, and two, Somebody blames everything in my store for the death of their cannabis. And that's because, just like anything else, not everybody can make everything look good. That's why we're testing all these root boosting products, because they all claim to increase root growth, but not all of them do it the same way. Great White does it with microbes. Green Fuse and Humboldt Roots do it with chemical triggers. And Green Pad does it with CO2. And I'm not saying any one is better than any other, or that using all of them together is the best answer. What I am saying is this, as a good grower, it's your job to both know the difference between them and their mechanisms of action. And it's your job to test and use and document and interpret the results you get. And that's why this episode is called Booster vs. Buster, because if you're going to make growing cannabis about you and about how smart you are and about how you are going to do whatever you want, whenever you want to, whether the plants want it or not, because that's what you want, well, you're gonna use all these products no matter what I say. And growing cannabis is probably gonna turn out like everything else in your life. But if this is about the plant, well, that's something different. And suddenly the difference is between how these products work and when to use them and how they work becomes oh so very important. But before I get into the technical side of how these things work, let's get some chores done first. And if you remember in the first episode, we pH adjusted the water. So for the entire series, you should know that all the water we're using is 6.0 pH adjusted ultimate RO water tested with a Grow Boss Mega Meter. Now let's get to the trays. And tray number one is the control tray. And it gets nothing but pH adjusted 6.0 ultimate RO water. Tray number two is the Clonex control tray. And for this, we just mix five mils of Clonex solution into a gallon. 
And tray number three is the Great White Myco Chum Control Tray because we need to isolate the Myco Chum too. And this just wants a couple mils per gallon. Before we feed the rest of these starts though, let's talk a little bit more about the products we're testing and how they relate to today's lesson, Root Booster or Root Buster. I know it seems like there are a ton of root boosting products on the market. And even though it seems like they all claim to do the same thing at the same time, they really don't. Let me show you what I mean. Basically, all these products work in one of three ways. There are microbes like Great White. And whether you use the powder version or Orca, the hydro version, microbes all work in the same way. Then there are chemical trigger products like Green Fuse and Roots by Humble. And they both work in the same way. And then there are rooting hormones like Clonex rooting gel. And even though we're not testing the rooting gel right now, it's important to this discussion because rooting gels don't work the same way the root boosting chemicals do or the same way the microbes do. And it's important that you clearly understand the differences between them. Otherwise, you'll use them wrong and you'll be missing out on the real benefits of each. Yes, but perhaps more importantly, if you try to solve a problem with the wrong product, it won't work. You won't get the results you're looking for. And you will be wasting your money and time and your plants will die and you'll blame whatever product you were using because you wanted to do what you wanted to do or you did whatever these bottles told you with little regard for the product, or the plant, or the situation. Again, and this is a big deal with growers, is this about you or your plants? And while you think about that, let's do a few more chores before we go over how each of these products works their magic. Now tray number four is the Great White Microbes tray. And because this is a powder, and because the instructions call for one scoop per five gallons, we're going to weigh a scoop and then we're going to use a fifth of that weight plus five mils of the clonex solution and we'll water with it now tray five is great white again but this time we're going to be adding their myco chum to the mix so clonex solution plus great white plus myco chum and this stuff just wants a couple of mils per gallon Tray six is Orca, which is the hydro version of the Great White Powder. And it wants us to use 10 mils per gallon. So we're just going to add one mil into one gallon. And tray seven is Orca with the Myco Chum from Great White. So we'll add one mils of Orca and a couple of mils of Myco Chum along with five mils of Clonex solution. And remember, the Myco Chum is the food for the microbes, not the plant. Before we feed the Roots by Humboldt nutrients and green fuse trays, I thought now would be a good time to talk about the actual process and what's actually in them in more depth. Okay, even though all these products seem to claim to do the same thing, they don't. And perhaps the best way to explain the differences between them is to start by explaining the actual process of rooting and how the roots actually develop and how they work. And then once we understand that, we can discuss the differences between the actual products themselves and their different interactions with the clone and the root. So let's start with a clone first. And when we look at a clone, we can see there are no roots. But interestingly enough, every cell on a plant is technically a stem cell, which means almost any cell on a cutting can become almost any other cell, including root cells, which is the hack that all these micro tissue culture products exploit. But there are two conditions whenever you take a clone though. First, you must always have a growth shoot attached to it because a leaf can root, but it can't produce a growth shoot. And the second thing to know is this, roots don't grow directly from the skin of the plant. There's actually an intermediary step 
called root buds. And these are actually where the roots grow from. So the first thing a clone does, once it's been separated from the plant, is signal the stem cells in its outer skin to turn into those hard, callous root buds where the roots actually grow from. And just like creating roots happens in two step steps, the roots themselves work in two steps. First is the root shaft. And these long, thick skin parts of the roots do two things. They stabilize the plant so it doesn't fall over and they absorb water. Then the second part of the root is the root hairs. And these little fibers at the end of the shaft are as delicate as the scent trichomes that grow on the buds. And they're also the first things to die off when there's a problem, like overwatering or overfeeding. And remember, the root hairs are responsible for absorbing nutrients, which is why I always tell you pH lockout does not exist. But that's a lesson for another video. For now though, all you really need to know is that the combination of root shaft and root hair work together to regulate the concentration of water and nutrient salts that enters the plant, which is why I always tell you, too many nutrients is the number one problem. And we go over all that in the Humboldt Nutrient Series, The Truth About Nutrients. But for now, let's get back to our chores and then we'll take a little more, talk a little more about how these products actually work. Trade is roots by Humboldt Nutrients and it wants one to two mils per gallon and we sell a lot of the stuff in the store. And when I use words like hormones and enzymes, I want you to think about adrenaline and just how little it takes to make your heart race and your skin sweat. It's, all, it's so small, it's measured in picoliters, which is exactly why more isn't better when it comes to root boosters. Tray 9 is testing Greenfuse rooting hormone and it wants just a half mil per gallon. And again, it doesn't take much when adding hormones to the mix. And that's exactly why you should just follow the directions on the bottle and not grow a brain. That's also why you absolutely need to know the differences between these products. Look how little you use and look how big the effect. So let's talk a little bit about that and then we'll finish up the trays. Now that you understand how the roots work, let's talk more about these products and let's start with Clonex Rooting Gel because this stuff goes on before there are even roots. And that's exactly what makes Clonex Rooting Gel so special. Remember how I told you the stem cells in the skin of the cuttings transform into the root buds before the roots can actually develop? Well, the chemical trigger in Clonex Rooting Gel accelerates that process. And let's be clear, a healthy cutting from a healthy plant will produce root buds without any help from you or Clonex rooting gel. All the gel really does is intensify the natural process and where the cutting might naturally produce only one or two root buds out of the bottom, just enough to get it started. That same cutting dipped in Clonex rooting gel would produce explosive root buds two inches up the stalk and all the way around, which is the kind of start your plants need when growing indoors under intense lights and in fast rotations. And that brings us to the root boosting chemicals like green fuse and roots by Humboldt Nutrient. And these interact with the actual root hairs because those products are so similar to the natural hormones that trigger the plant to produce more roots that they lock into the same receptors and trigger the same reactions because the plant can't tell the difference between them. And that's why root boosters don't work on cuttings just like Clonex rooting gel doesn't work on the actual roots. And that's why no matter which of these products you use, you're always going to have to add microbes. And that's because products like Great White Microbes are actually alive. And instead of chemically tricking the plant into doing something, they do their work naturally. See, microbes actually live on and tend the roots of the plants like they're the gardens of their lives. And technically, uh, I suppose they are, 
because the microbes need the roots to survive, just like the roots need the microbes to survive. And it's that symbiotic interaction that you're looking for, especially if you overwatered and rotted the roots until there were no more root hairs left. Why? Because microbes live on the roots and encourage new root growth. And for that matter, new root hairs. That's why you couldn't use root boosting hormones to fix overwatering. Just like you couldn't use the Clonex rooting gel to grow bigger roots, just like you couldn't use the root boosters to start the roots like the Clonex gel. And while all that information is swimming up in your dome, let's finish this week's chores and then we'll tie it all in together and finish up this lesson. Tray 10 is the green pad tray. And this tray is a little different because we're testing the effects of CO2, which means this tray gets fed just like the Clonex solution control tray. But the real magic here comes from the CO2 the Green Pad Junior generates. Because in the photosynthesis equation, plants use light for energy to convert water and CO2 into sugar and oxygen. And nowhere in that equation do nutrients exist. And finally, trays 11 and 12, the mystery trays. And I'm not gonna tell you what's in them until the last episode, and maybe not even then. And while I water and feed these, you can watch as I finish up this episode's lesson, Root Booster or Root Buster. And then we'll go over what we have planned for episode three before ending this one. Now that you understand how each of these products works, and now that you understand how to use them correctly, you should probably hear my standard disclaimer when it comes to this stuff. All these products have one thing in common. They are meant to make a good grow better. Because the truth is, if you have any problem throughout this entire process, one, you are never going to get the yield you're supposed to from the light. And two, because you did not get the yield you were supposed to, by definition, you cannot get the quality you wanted. Because the two go together. You can't get the yield without the quality. But you can't get the quality without the yield. They are inseparable in every way. Because when have you ever done something half-assed and not have it blow up, right? Especially when it's important and expensive, like growing cannabis indoors. Because if you miss even a small detail, suddenly 50% of your weight is sacrificed to the yield gods. That's why no one week is any more important than any other. And you have to get everything right for this to go right. Okay, let's go over what we have planned for the next episode and we are done. And in the next episode, episode number three, week number four, day 28, the topic will be overwatering. And not only are we going to do our second feeding, we're actually going to start comparing growth rates and reevaluate our Nickel City Bad Boy lights to see if we need to turn the other two bulbs on. And we will reevaluate our Clonex solution dose to see if we should increase it to 10 mils from 5. But for now, I want to show you the two control trays. Remember, tray number one only gets pH adjusted ultimate RO water, and tray number two only gets Clonex solution. And it's only got it once so far, and you can already see the difference. Before we end the show, here's a couple of words for the sponsors. When you go shopping, don't forget to get Gorilla Tents if you want the most hardcore, heavy-duty tents on the market. And Mondi Humidity Domes for the perfect environment so you can start the perfect clones. And when it comes time to feed those clones, you're going to want to do that with Clonex Solution, the perfect food for your perfect little cuttings. And of course, all these little seedlings are being supplied fresh CO2 from Green Pad Junior CO2 Generators, the perfect CO2 for your perfect clones. And don't forget to buy great white microbes for explosive root growth. Finally, something that keeps its promise, great white microbes really does blow your shit up. And don't forget, all this growth is happening under Nickel City Bad Boy 4 foot 4 bulb T5 lights. Okay, 
Thanks for watching. I'm the Grow Boss, and if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions between now and then, you can always schedule a consult with me by clicking here. Trust me, I know how much you've spent and how much time you have invested in this. And I promise, I can fix your garden in about an hour. So call me before you quit.